Time to start counting the cost of yesterday's mass action by the taxi industry in Cape Town. Violence, intimidation and a complete shutdown of major arteries into the city carries a hefty price tag. Our reporter Ronald Masinda is looking at the impact on business, productivity and just some of the physical damage to property. Let's go to him now. Ronald, thank you so much for joining us. I know some commuters who took seven or eight hours to get home last night uh, and they had a, a terrible time of it. Um, they were frightened and were also exhausted by the end of the day. What were some of the other repercussions of yesterday's strike? Well, good morning, Annika. Well, certainly hectic scenes were witnessed across uh, the city of Cape Town yesterday. And in areas like Mitchell's Plain as well, taxi operations were also badly affected. Many of the taxi operators here were not part of the strike, but they too say that, you know, they were badly affected. Businesses as well. We are expecting the city of Cape Town as well to also speak to us uh, later this morning with regards to the aftermath. But joining me now is the rank manager here in Mitchell's Plain, Mr. Abdul Aziz. Thank you so much for your time. Just give us a sense of what took place here yesterday. Yeah, yesterday... Um, I'll hold the mic. No, yesterday, I mean, uh, the commuters, they all came here to work and they thought it was going to be a peaceful march. That was the thing that was being said. But um, after the first trip of our uh, drivers went out, and when they came back, the vans, three of our vans were smashed. And the uh, march was said it was going to be a peaceful march because the car and Codetta, they wanted to give over a memorandum to the government. So the memorandum that was wanted to be given over was in the sense of, it looked like all the taxi industries has been targeted by the cops because of the impoundment. Because if you look at in Eastern Cape, for impoundment, they pay 2,000 rand. But here by us, we have to pay 7,000 and after that, 15,000, which I think is not fair. And our commuters were stranded. It's only for the bread and butter they went to work. Uh, some people were traumatized because they were in the taxis and they were, they were traumatized because how they were, the vans was ambushed, the windows were thrown in. Let me come in there because you said that three of your vans were were damaged. Uh, any reasons behind it? Do you know who was behind this? Uh, like I said, I can't point fingers who was behind it, but um, they said it was only the cart and Codetta was going to strike. And the other reasons, they were free to have a, a right of way to work. You see, so the drivers just came to work and the vans were smashed. So now, we don't know who's accountable for these things. We know that uh, the issue of uh, taxes being impounded has been a long one here in the city of Cape Town. We know that you've raised these grievances before, not only uh, as Carter and Cotetta, but as other taxi associations. Uh, what do you think is the way forward? Do you think this issue will be resolved uh, within uh, this uh, time period? No, the memorandum was given over to the government because that, uh, they have to, the government has to come back within seven days. So they need an answer. You understand? It's only fair because... The cart and Codetta, the, the memorandum they gave over us, not just for them, as for all the industries, the taxi industry. So the thing where they were, the march was, it was a good thing. It's just to be fair, you understand? In terms of your commuters, uh, how badly are they affected? Do you, do, do you think that they feel safe or uh, less safer in terms of what took place? No, I mean, the commuters don't feel safe because even if you look at it this morning, our work dropped. A drop, drop completely because the people is in fear. Their lives is at stake. You understand? And they're only going to work for the, for the bread and butter and the municipality per year. You understand? Uh, just lastly, Abdul, in terms of businesses themselves, I know that they also uh, were badly affected here. We just playing. We saw videos. Uh, were there any injuries whatsoever reported uh, with regards to yesterday's attacks? Yes, there was quite a few injuries reported. Uh, I think passengers got hurt because of the bricks that fly to the vans. One of our drivers, um, he was even, evenly he was hit. Blood came out of him, they robbed him, they took his firearm, everything. Abdul, thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Uh, that was Abdul Aziz, he is the taxi rank manager here. We also heard uh, Annika earlier on from Golden Arrow Bus Service because they were also affected by uh, yesterday's strike. Uh, we heard from a spokesperson telling us that at least one of their buses was uh, uh, completely gutted and this will cost in the region of 2.5 million rand. 
two other buses were also, uh, you, you know, uh, burnt, but uh, the damages uh, could be fixed. But uh, that, that is just some of uh, w w what we're hearing on the ground in terms of uh, uh, the bad effect that this strike has had on the industry. We will also be continuing to getting more voices with regards to what took place here yesterday, as well as from the city of Cape Town. Yeah, Ronald, when we spoke to the uh, Western Cape Transport Department, they said that a permit was given for a, a short march and a memorandum to be handed over to the Premier, Alan Windy, and uh, they didn't anticipate things becoming out of hand and getting violent at the ranks in the morning, especially in Nyanga. Uh, Carter and Cadetta are saying they had nothing to do with it. Is there some kind of third element that we don't know about that's responsible for it? That's certainly the indication that the taxi owners are giving us. Yes, we do know that uh, Qatar themselves have also distanced uh, themselves from uh, the actions that took place, especially on the N2, because uh, from what we heard from Qatar is that uh, a, a number of uh, uh, people were seen in taxis who not necessarily part of the industry uh, partaking in uh, the strike, and uh, they were the ones who were, you know, involved uh, in the stoning of uh, vehicles uh, near the N2, and in areas such as Bonteville, where we saw very ugly scenes uh, between taxi associations uh, from uh, areas uh, between Bonteville and Langa. So what we heard from Qatar as well is that, you know, uh, they were not, uh, they, they wanted a peaceful strike. And this was an agreement between the city of Cape Town and themselves that this will be a peaceful strike. Uh, 2,000 uh, taxi operators taking part in the strike. And the problem seemed to also arise, Annika, on the end too, where the taxi associations also blamed uh, several police vehicles blocking uh, the taxi operators uh, from continuing from the strike. And this seemed to have led to the congestion and uh, to a lot of the panic that took place yesterday. But in terms of in town, we also heard uh, allegations uh, from some of the taxi buses saying that uh, <coughs> other people who were part of the strike uh, seemed to be intoxicated, seemed to be drunk. Uh, so they were certainly not people who wanted to participate peacefully in the strike. And as well, we've seen very ugly uh, visuals uh, on social media of, of one or two people in these taxis, uh, you know, being involved in very ugly scenes. Uh, but what we can also establish at this stage is that the city of Cape Town seems to be threatening to take legal action because they feel that, you know, they've lost quite a lot in terms of damage to property uh, during the strike action and that the permit was issued based on whether or not this strike will be peaceful. So the city is saying that they were assured by both Carta and Cordetta that this will be a peaceful strike and that since it wasn't a peaceful strike that they will institute legal action. And this is what uh, Carta has said earlier on. Uh, but uh, we will continue to get more reaction, uh, Annika, because uh, what we do can't establish at this stage is the amount of injured people because we've seen many other people also jumping out of buses uh, yesterday. All right, uh, Ronald, well, hopefully commuters will be able to get back home safely this evening and uh, there won't be any more problems. We certainly did hear that uh, there would be legal, possible legal action and uh, hopefully there won't be any flare-ups uh, if that is instituted. Thank you, Ronald.